everybody, what's going on? I'm John and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. Today, a classic topic yet again. What was your most what the F paranormal moment? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. When my boyfriend died, I was at my mom's visiting for New Year's Eve. On New Year's Day, I was having a nap in the spare room. He came in. I remember it so clearly. He woke me up and sat at the edge of my bed. I don't remember him talking and then he cuddled up to me. In my dream, I thought that was weird that he was there, but I was really tired and confused. I went back to sleep. When I woke up, he wasn't there and had a phone call from his brother that he had passed away. So I had a dream and a dream and a visitation from someone I didn't know who had passed. It's given me loads to think about the afterlife. It's pretty curious. I got a goodbye and I'm grateful. I miss him. Most people who hear that story think I'm crazy. I'm okay with that. When my son was three, he told my wife and I we had a ghost in the house we just bought. When we asked more about it, my son went on to describe a little old man named George. He assured us George was nice. The next day, the elderly neighbor came over and saw some renovating we had done and said George would love what you've done to the place. He lived here for 50 years until his death. My wife and I got the chills. We've lived here happily with George for over 20 years now. I was in bed and woke up to my brother in my doorway screaming. I immediately ran to him, but he ran away. When I caught him, I asked why he was screaming, and he said he saw another me hovering over myself, laughing and was terrified of me for a while. Now he doesn't remember, but my parents do. Wife and I were standing on our deck one evening just looking out over the city lights. About five minutes in, I suddenly felt very lightheaded and my entire field of vision slowly over the course of about four seconds faded to a neon purple color. For about eight seconds, solid purple was all I could see and I wasn't even super sure I was still standing up. It faded back to normal over the course of about four more seconds and I was just standing there thinking, okay, damn. That was super weird, but whatever. Then I looked at my wife, and she looked completely horrified and confused. She looked at me and said, holy shit, that just happened to you too, didn't it? I was like, uh, yeah. And she said, purple? Yep. Neither of us were drinkers or did any kind of drugs, not even caffeine, no medications, no supplements, nothing. We have no explanation to this day, but we both remember it vividly. My husband and I stayed in an old hotel on Christmas Eve once with a busted radiator for heat that wouldn't turn off. We had to crack the window before going to sleep. In the night, I had a nightmare that a creepy old woman, a nurse maybe, climbed in through the window and leaned over the bed to strangle me. I woke in a panic and shook my husband awake. Honey, I had a bad dream. He woke up and goes, oh man, I just had the craziest dream that this lady was standing over the bed trying to strangle you. We came to find out later that that particular hotel is reputed to be quite haunted. Have you ever had that experience? A dream shared by the same people in a bed? I've never, but it sounds really cool. I was up late studying for my exams and my brother was also just up on his computer. The way my home is structured, the main door opens into an opening and then there's a long corridor with first room door on the right side is my brother's a bit further down the corridor, there is my parents' room, door on the same side as my brother's door, and then on the exact opposite side facing my parents' room is my room. Then finally the corridor ends with a bathroom, so the rooms are uh, sort of making a U shape, with the bathroom door forming the bottom curve of the U. Anyway, it was around 2am, and both me and my brother's door is wide open, and I can hear his keyboards clicking, but... It's just background noise as I'm focused on studying. Suddenly, I hear a sound that I can only describe as boots crunching on snow. This makes me lose my focus, and next I hear my 10-year-old, sweeter than ever lab, barking the most vicious bark I've ever heard. I look up towards my door and see a dark shadow pass by my open door, followed by my lab, who goes into the bathroom. My brother comes screaming out of his room and I run out as well, convinced we have an intruder in the house. My parents are also wide awake and out of their room now, as they've never heard my dog bark like that. I mindlessly followed my lab into the bathroom and it's completely empty. I tell everyone about the shadow that passed across my door 
and my brother tells me he saw it too, which is why he screamed. From his point of view, he also heard the boots crunching noise and looked towards the corridor and saw the shadow of a man with a hat on glide smoothly across the wall, with the dog following after trying to jump on the wall to get the shadow. We searched everywhere for a possible intruder. The front door was properly locked, and to this day, that incident makes my family uncomfortable as F. I don't know if this is really paranormal, but one time I was having a sleepover at my house with the boys, and when I went to bed, I slept in the clothes I wore that day. When I woke up, I was in a different pair of pants and underwear, still wondering what happened. My grandmother died in October 1995, when I was 15. Flash forward four months to my birthday. I come home from school and check the answering machine. I hear my aunt singing happy birthday, so I call her back and say thank you. She says for what? I tell her the message. She didn't call me. The only other person it could have been was my grandmother. Nobody except her and my aunt had a similar voice, and it couldn't be anyone outside the family because she called me by my family nickname that nobody else has ever called me except for the eight people in my closest family. I went to listen back and the message didn't save. She also came back and visited my baby cousin who was talking to the corner of the ceiling and his mom asked who he was talking to and he said, gee mom, mom. Then two months later, when my grandfather was in hospice, we woke up to him screaming, no, not yet, it's not fair, it's finally my turn very complicated story, but my grandfather was not a good husband or father and was estranged for a few years in the 70s, but my grandmother made my mom and aunts talk to him again. After my grandmother died, he was the sole focus of their attention, and it wasn't just because she made them talk to him. I think she came to get him, but let him stay a little longer. One day I went to sleep at around 2 a.m. and as soon as I laid down the floor started creaking like someone was walking around. I quickly got up to turn on the lights but as soon as I stood up it stopped. After a minute of me just thinking what the F, I turned off the lights and laid down in my bed again. But as soon as I did that it started again. This went on in a loop of me turning on and off the lights and creaking starting and stopping accordingly for about 15 minutes. I even checked if it was because I was lying in the bed by using my phone as a light while laying in it and still, as soon as the room got lit up, it stopped. Still have no idea what was causing the creaking. Not the first time I experienced some paranormal stuff in this house. Five years ago, in an all boys college dorm, my room was on the second floor of the building and the laundry area is located at an extended area on the ground floor. One night, I found out that I have no clean shirts anymore, so I brought three pieces of clothing with me and some detergent. As usual, it was really quiet that night because of the strict rules of the dormitory. More of those rules included not bringing a girl over. As I was setting up my playlist, I saw someone sitting on the top steps of the stairs. It was a long-haired woman. Her back was directly facing me, so I can't see her face. I didn't want to anyway. I wasn't able to scream nor move. She wasn't moving either. I tried to get out of there as fast as possible, but all I was able to do was step back super effing slowly until I was not able to see her. I told my three roommates what happened and two of them said that they have friends who also encountered the woman on the stairs. I wore smelly clothes the next day. I'll try to make this brief cause it can turn into a long story. I once drove from town A to town B to go to a bar with a friend got to his house in town B and we took his truck to the bar. It was a weeknight, so we just went to have a beer and chat with our friend who was the bartender. Never ever caught a buzz. He asks me what time it is, and I check my phone and tell him, and we decide to leave. Put my phone in my pocket and head out the door to the empty parking lot. Do the pocket check one last time, no phone. We hunted everywhere for it. Parking lot, bathrooms I never used, in and around his truck, no phone. Give up and leave search around both our vehicles again back at his place, even checking inside my car even though we both know I had my phone at the bar. Eventually, again, give up, head back to town A. 10 minutes from home, I hear something bounce from the middle armrest into the storage area beneath it. The F was that my phone? Can't feel anything. Maybe it bounced and fell under the seat, but I had my phone at the bar and not at my car. 
Finally get home, jump out of the car to look under the seat. One arm sitting on the driver's seat for leverage. Nothing there. Just as I'm wondering what I heard fall, I hear or feel something come tumbling down the front of the backrest and fall onto my hand. No way that can be. But I feel the smooth glass of the screen before I even flip my hand over to pick it up. My phone. In order to have fallen from where it did, it would have had to survive a 20 mile, 30 minute drive precariously balanced on the top of my headrest and had to have been there the whole time since I lost my phone. But I had and lost my phone long before I had my car. We both saw me use my phone to see the time before we left the bar. Never did figure out what I heard, felt, fall into the middle console the first time either. That was almost 10 years ago and I try not to think about it because it just makes my head hurt. Is it possible that he just remembers his friend taking his phone out and that his phone may have in fact been in his car the whole time? Or was it a teleporting phone? In the house I lived in as a young child, I would hear people walking around end conversations. I could never make out what was being said, but I could tell out of the four different voices, one was deeper and more controlling. I guess would be a way to put it. I was left home alone a lot, then both my parents worked full time. When I was in my teens, we moved to a new state, and in the new home, it was a bit more the same. I could hear conversations in the upstairs rooms that no one was in. That progressed to the sounds of footsteps that as the years went on got heavier and more stomping than walking. Doors would open and slam on their own. I would wake up to the sensation of someone blowing in my ear or on my face. I moved out when I was 16. At 17, I came back to my loft type apartment with my roommate. It was just him and I. From the bedroom area, just above us, it sounded like someone jumped off his bed with a heavy feet, ran from his room, slammed the door shut, into my room, slammed the door shut, and faded to nothing. He moved out two weeks after. When I was like eight, I went to a mountain school trip. We were six by bedroom. One night, I couldn't sleep, so I kept my eyes open in the dark, and suddenly I saw a white figure skiing right next to my bed. I was surprised to see it as the silhouette was not blurry at all. I then felt something knocking under my mattress. It was one of the girls I was with in my room. She had the bed right under me. She asked me if I was sleeping. After I told her no, she asked me if I saw the dude skiing too. I told her I did and we did not sleep well for the rest of the trip. When I was about five or six years old, sometimes I would say grandpa was there with us and I could even describe him perfectly. He died when my father was 17, many years before I was born, and I've never seen any pictures of him because my grandma didn't have any. This happened just yesterday actually. I just got the longest feeling of deja vu I've ever felt going on for a solid few minutes, but it was more than normal, like I realized I basically had the exact same thing happen in a dream. I knew exactly what was going to happen, I knew that my teacher was about to give someone a sour patch kid, we just finished a 3 day hike so she was being nice lol. Then I turned knowing that a friend was about to give a pen to another and that happened, then just a bunch of other things. It's like I could see what happened before it happened. It was just the weirdest feeling ever. Once I woke up at around 3 a.m. and there was a small orb of light that looked like a miniature sun that was floating above the end of my bed. It was very bright and about the size of a baseball. I shut my eyes and opened them again and it was still there. Eventually I was confused and went back to bed and when I woke up it was light out and the orb was gone. Never saw it again for as long as I lived out there. I was 9 and it was like 2 am. I was starting to fall asleep but kept waking up. At one point I had opened my eyes and there was Momo's head but with spider legs. I had done that dumb Momo trend and thought nothing of it. But when I had saw that my heart had stopped. I couldn't move or talk just stare. It was like right on my stomach too, so its big eyes were just there. Five minutes later, when I had opened my eyes again, it was gone. I don't know what to call that, but that's definitely some sort of paranormal stuff. 
I was at my friend's house when I was like 11, and she wanted to do some weird ass candle ritual, so I, a dumbass, agreed and started asking the candle some weird ass questions like, do you like the barn flick the fire a lot if yes, and then it would flick or not, and the flame would go really high or not, but that's not it. After her mom found out and got mad at her, she was on her phone. I dropped the one I just got at the time and it effed it up, so I was just sitting there. And I looked at her window. It's one of those where you lift it up, but it's really hard to do so, and it just starts lifting up about 4 inches. And I start freaking out, and she pulls it back down again and was like, why the f did you pull the window up? And I said, I didn't, but it started doing it again and she saw I was totally freaked out and couldn't sleep. The thing she told me that happened after I left freaked me out. During my military service, a roommate met a lady during the weekend off. Being fairly private, he wasn't much into details when we others were giving him the third degree. That night I met him and the girl on a train station and gave him the creeps the morning after by describing his new affection to him in detail didn't think much of it personally until I actually met them both in real life a couple of months later. She was exactly as I remembered her, despite never knowing anything about her besides her name. We stayed in a rental house for a while since our original house was getting renovated and that house was really creepy. My fam were the only ones who witnessed scary stuff there so I really didn't believe them until one day we were packing our stuff since our original house was all done. I was trying on my shoe, then I looked over to my side and saw a kid like white shadow pass by me. I literally ran after seeing that. 